Good evening, and thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Tanisha Shade Spain, and I'm your host for Mid American Gardener. Thank you so much for tuning in. We took a little bit of a break from doing our live shows, but we are live tonight, and we're going to have a really great show. We've got some panelists here that have um, some show and tells and some wonderful things to show you. So let's go ahead and have them introduce themselves, tell you a little bit about their expertise and uh, what they will be talking about tonight. So we'll start with you. Thanks, Nisha. Uh -huh. I'm uh, Kent Miles, and I'm a uh, owner of Illinois Willows. We're a specialty cut flower grower uh, located in Western Champaign County. And I can take phone calls on cut flowers, uh, perennials, woody ornamentals. Okay, wonderful. Don? I'm Don White. I'm an emeritus professor of plant pathology from University of Illinois. While at the university, I taught introductory plant pathology, diseases of field crops, and diseases of ornamentals and turf grasses, and did research on corn diseases. Uh, after retirement, I got kind of bored, so I became a master gardener in Champaign County, and we have our garden walk coming up uh, the 15th of this month. Okay, you'll have to give us more information about that because I'm sure folks will be interested. And last but not least. <laughs> I'm Chuck Voigt. <laughs> uh, I was in the Department of Horticulture, the Natural Resources, and then uh, <clears throat> Crop Sciences in, in Vegetable Crops and Herbs. So... Okay. That would be a That's your good, area. Good, good things to ask Okay, me. perfect. So we've got a great mix of <clears throat> skills and expertise this evening. Um, but before we jump right in and get the show started, uh, kind of a sad start this evening. Uh, friends of our show may already know this, but uh, Jim Schuster, a longtime panelist and expert, passed away recently. Uh, Jim spent more than 40 years of his life doing exactly what he loved, and that was working in horticulture. He graduated from the U of I with both a bachelor's in horticulture and later a master's in uh, plant pathology. During his career, he served as an extension educator, a pesticide trainer, and uh, many of us will remember him um, from being a regular on this show. So definitely um, thinking about him, thinking about his family, but uh, he's just in the short time that I met him, uh, was a great guy and uh, gave me some really great advice on what to do in my garden. So he will definitely um, be missed for sure. And you know, he was, I think he was here on one of our last uh, Super Saturdays that we did a bunch of shows back to back. And so just a great guy. Told me what plant spray to go get for my apple trees. And they get so tickled about plant diseases and kind of, <laughs> kind of ha half giggle through his, yes. his, his, his answer. <laughs> he loved it. Absolutely <clears throat> loved it. So, but he will definitely be missed. And uh, so Kent, we'll start with you. You brought in some cut flowers today. Yeah. Now, um, we'll have to talk about the rain all throughout the show because I'd love to hear how this is kind of affecting uh, all of your lives. So yeah. uh, what did you bring us? So uh, for the show and tell today, we brought some of our lilies that we're harvesting at the present time. And these are an LA lily, which is a cross between a long beforeum and an Asiatic. So they will have a little bit larger bloom than the Asiatic. They'll have a slight fragrance, but not heavy like an Oriental. Mm -hmm. And we do them, we're doing about uh, 12 different varieties this year, and we'll be doing close to about 9,000 this wow, summer. Wow, very nice. So, again, with the rain, right. um, how has that been affecting you? Uh, we've had to, um, the process and the way we grow our lilies, we don't grow them in the ground. Ah. So they're grown in bulb crates. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will have to, when it was really wet a couple weeks ago <laughs> and a month ago. Uh, we generally will cover the whole uh, row. Oh, okay. So we do them in a shade house. Gotcha. And we do, it's probably like a, about 100 foot long. Okay. And we just line the crates up. And so we'll do poly, like a little tunnel mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. that to keep that excess rain off. Now we, I live in Vermilion County and we had that hailstorm a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. Were you affected at all by that? We didn't get a bit of hail. Really? Yeah. Huh, lucky, lucky. Yeah. Okay, did you have anything else with that's this about, particular that's about the one that you wanted yeah. to share? Yeah. Okay, all right. And uh, what did you, well, what are we going to be talking about with you, Don? Okay, first of all, we're going to talk about sycamore anthracnose, which has been a serious problem uh, recently in central Illinois. It is favored by environmental conditions. As soon as we have the slides, it is favored <laughs> by environmental conditions uh, of cool and wet temperatures about a neighborhood of about 50 degree, 55 degrees daily average. Are you going to have the slides? We're going to be able to get. Okay. Well, let's come back to those. We'll come back to your photos in just a second. We're, we're, let's take a couple calls. We've got Kathy in Champaign. Can we go to Kathy? And we'll work on getting Don's pictures. Kathy, uh, you have a question about green pepper plants. Uh, yes. My husband just planted some green pepper plants this mm -hmm. week, and they have flowers on them. We were wondering if the buds should be nipped off so that more energy goes toward the plants. 
since they're still small. Okay. What do you think, guys? Should she nip off those? Uh, yes. They lop those off. Yeah. Yes. It's not always always easy to to just bite the bullet and do it, but yes, because that way the plant is going to going to get some structure. It's going to get some leaves to feed the peppers when it has them. If it if it sets up a pepper when it only has three or four leaves, all its energy is going to go into trying to make that pepper happen, and it, it's it's going to be a little runt anyway. And get you pick them off. Let the plant grow for a couple of weeks, and then, mm. then you should be good to go. Okay, great. All right, Georgia in Rockford with a question about barberry bushes. Hi. Hi, go ahead. I have barberry bushes that we planted probably in 1998, and with the last couple of years of the drought, they seem to be dying. Uh, there is green at the bottom. Should I cut them all the way back, or are they a lost cause? I'd suggest cutting them back and uh, see what they do. Okay. I bet you they come back. It a lot of it depends on what, what the variety is, but I bet you they'll come back. If they're showing green at the bottom, you would, yeah. you would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bill in Hoopston with a question about iris. Are you there, Bill? Yes. Go ahead. Well, what I want to know is they haven't bloomed, and I wonder why. They, they bloomed the first year. They've been in there about seven, eight years, maybe ten. And they, this is the first year that they haven't bloomed? Yes. What do you think? Are we talking bearded iris or Japanese iris? Do you know what type? No, I don't know what kind. Okay. Uh, probably bearded. Probably bearded, then. Yeah. Uh, after seven or eight years, they, they, probably they, need they, to... they could be getting kind of tight, kind of, sh you know, kind of fighting it out and none of them winning. Right. Uh, so I would probably do some dividing, digging right. them up, spacing yeah. them out a little bit further this time okay. than you because, did before originally. And that could happen pretty much any time yeah. now because if they aren't going to bloom, right. you can get them reestablished. <laughs> Just go for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dig them up, cut them, yeah. cut the leaves back so that they don't have a lot of mm -hmm. foliage to lose. You, know, have you think of, they're competing kind of for resources, thing. that kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, they, they, they typically, especially the, the new hybrid ones mm -hmm. that are, that are Super big blooms and all those ah. things seem to, to do that worse. The the old ones would just kind of, you know, spread hang on and, and spread. Out, yeah. and, and But the new ones are, oh. are a little touchier. Gotcha. So okay. I think divide them and, and, and make sure that you have ample sunlight for them. And, and they, they should be back in production by next year if you do that now. Okay. All right. We're going to Kathy and Champagne <clears throat> with a question about coneflowers. Oh, my goodness. Hi. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I didn't realized you were going to get to me that quickly. That's okay. all right. I have had the problem with coneflowers where they get, they kind of look like an alien on the top. And apparently it's some type of, um, I don't, I don't know exactly what it is, but something is causing it. And I want to know whether or not I can plant new coneflowers, uh, get rid of those and then plant new coneflowers. It's not kind of away better work. from where they were. Is that possible? I get them on a occasionally, not every year, and I don't have a problem with mm -hmm. mine. It's a, something that pops up. I don't know if it's a, a virus or if it's an insect that is deforming the the cone. Yeah. <laughs> but but you, you'll have the cone. That was a good question. Next yeah. one. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. 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 So you'll have the cone and then the, the rows of the petals. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then in I, the middle of that cone, you'll get some more petals popping up, if that's what I'm yeah. thinking the caller's speaking of. Yeah, hmm. might, yeah. I don't know if it's one of the a phytoplasm or a viroid, something. Okay. All right. I, I would try, try to try replacing them and, and yeah. see, see what happens. Okay. Uh, we have a call indicator about wheat seeds. Hi, are you there? Hello? Okay, looks like we don't have that caller. So, while we have a break from calls, <coughs> let's see if we can get back to Don's question, or Don's show and tell, um, that we tried to get to earlier. Is that possible? Can we get to that? Sycamore? Anthra, how do we pronounce anthracnose. it? Anthracnose. Anthracnose. <laughs> Sycamore anthracnose. Now, that's not it, but that's one of my questions. That was a, uh, somebody that sent that in. That is a Japanese red maple, and basically what had happened on that is uh, they bought the plant, paid somebody to 
plant it and then it doesn't look good. Now if you look at it closely, uh, what you'll see is that the area along the margin of the leaf is dead. It's called leaf scorch because of the area at the margin of the leaf is the last thing to get to water. So what happens there is it's from transplant shock or it could be where they were stored uh, before it was planted. You may want to prune off some uh, branches and then it should be all right. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are back to you, Kent, right, I believe? <laughs> yeah, we skipped me. Did we skip you? Oh, yeah. I'm all out of sorts. So this is what happens when you take a break from live shows and you come back and you're a little rusty. Okay. <laughs> I'm speaking for myself, not everybody else. <laughs> okay, so Chuck. Okay. All right. Well. <clears throat> Let's pretend it's been a rainy spring and no one's got to do anything and everything has been terrible, and there right. we go, pick it up. Well, <laughs> at this point in the season, your, your big box stores, even your, your regular garden centers, everybody is marking down things, to, trying to get them moved yes. out. Well, some things may already have been dead for weeks. <laughs> you just don't uh, know it. <laughs> particularly things that come in boxes like that that are like nursery stock. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll kind of put a half-hearted sprout out in March or whenever they put them on the shelf, and by the time they put them half off, it's they're dead. they're all dead. So <laughs> uh, always always look through and 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 see if, if they're in plastic bags like this one was. Uh, I went and I got dahlias mm -hmm. and I made sure there was there was two in here. I made sure I had two strong sprouts. Life was good. Mm -hmm. Half price is is about what I want to pay for them anyway because I'm right. cheap. <laughs> um, uh, gladiolus seem to hold up better than some other things. The corms stay stay viable a, a lot better than, than some of the other things. So that. So when you're at the store mm -hmm. and you're kind of picking through these and mm -hmm. looking, tell me as a as a novice, what am I looking for? What is the health of the bulbs that right. I'm looking well, for? On gladiolus, usually there'll be some color showing through the the wrappers on the corms, mm -hmm. like it'll be yellow or sometimes uh, reddish. Okay. And and they should be firm, but not dried up and hard little got it hard little kernels because that's <laughs> that's they, they either become mushy or or they get hard and 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 and, and dry so up so firm but not hard right and just just plump and and like ready to go at this stage hopefully they're showing a little bit of a of a sprout that's coming up mm -hmm. um as, as far as shopping the the sales i i, I have developed a lack of conscience in terms of, you know, that's the thing that holds us in. <laughs> yeah. Look inside. Open it up and get in there. Look inside. Yay. They're, okay. they're good. They're going. I've, I've grown these in the past, and I know that they're that they're pretty resilient, so I, I had a, a pretty high degree of, of uh, certainty of that. Peruvian daffodils mm -hmm. or spider lilies. It's a, it's a bulb. Uh, it's native to southeastern U.S., Central America, down into South America, Peru. Um, it's nicely fragrant. More so at night, one mm -hmm. of those things that are pollinated by moths, so their fragrance comes out at night to to attract them. Um, so this is so, one of our ways to salvage. <laughs> right, right. And, <laughs> the and, rest and, of and, like, and, you know, and the other thing, you know, start things in flats. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't get into the garden, start them in flats and, and hope that down the line you're going to be able to get them where they need to be because timing is starting to be really critical mm -hmm. on a lot of things. And once the weather settles down, you don't you don't need a greenhouse. You don't need a lot of other things to start things in a flat. You just you can put it outside just, in a fairly sheltered location mm -hmm. and, and start them outside. So hopefully we're gonna we're gonna get in the swing of gardening, but it's it's been very frustrating it to this has. point. It has. It really has. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Now, do we have our Decatur caller on the line yet talking about wheat seeds? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead. Do you have your do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, I've been using uh, this wean pea that you can get in regular stores, and it's supposed to be uh, friendly uh, to the vegetation and stuff. Well, I used it again this year with just a regular Walmart brand, but the only thing is, is I must have got it too close to my Stella Bing cherry tree, and uh, it, I killed it. So is there any kind of specialty you know, way to take and double check with this wean pea that you put on your garden? Being that last year we got really bad, bad weeds with the Creeping Charlie. It took out a lot of that, but this year I took out my tree too. So is there any special items to look to? Because I always try to look for the friendly around the vegetation, so I use the organic. Okay, so how do you distinguish between the kill and the good stuff? Okay, you need, to, you need to read the label. If it's 
weed and feed a lot of times it might have got dicamba or something like that in it and if you get that to where the roots are taking it up it's going to hurt the plant so uh the one there are three things you need to do when you buy a pesticide one read the label two read the label three read the label and if you can't remember that don't buy it okay and dicamba is bad <laughs> okay around the trees uh, we're going to Dottie in Charleston with a question about dandelions. Dottie, are you there? Yes, I am. Go ahead. Um, I didn't want to use any um, weed killer this year, so or last year. Um, I live close to a hedgerow, and there's bunnies and there's squirrels, and there's a dog in the house. Anyway, I didn't want to use any of that stuff, so I just let things be. And I have huge um, dandelions. <laughs> leaves now the plant is very very hardy and happy how do i do should i dig them out or will they die over the winter or what do i do if i just want to do it without any kind of um, sect or, um <laughs> they're laughing because well, you just <laughs> asked for if a, you lot have of a lot of time on your hands <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can try digging them out um if you don't get a good portion of the root out mm -hmm they have a tendency to come, come back, right back from the root yeah mm -hmm. um so you need uh a way to get down in several inches to get as much of the root out as you can and repeat over and over um supposedly they're edible so i guess you could always just yeah, yeah they, they, teas they, they, and all sorts of things yeah, you can they, make they were, they were not an accidental introduction they were brought on purpose mm -hmm. and you can there are there are cultivars of dandelion that you can buy specifically for salads or for mm -hmm. or for greens or, or for whatever so um you know graze your way across the lawn but <laughs> It, it it it's it's going to take a lot of effort to, to to make much of a dent in a in a sizable dandelion population. Yeah, and the only problem is when you dig them out, uh, if you got plants that have flowered and you got seeds blowing around, and you're just planting more seeds. <laughs> so, I think she's kind of stuck with them. You're stuck with them, enjoy them. Unless you just rip all that out and get turf. There's that. Or <laughs> use a herbicide. Yeah. You know, we, that's a that's a topic for another show because I. I've noticed the theme that a lot of people are gun shy about it, and that's good. That's a good thing, but um, maybe sometimes we're a little too gun shy. So mm -hmm. I don't know. That's a topic for another day. Uh, Barbara in Decatur with a question about daylilies. Barbara, are you there? Daffodils. Yeah, daffodils. Oh, L1, Barbara yeah, Decatur. Well, whoever wants to talk. Oh, we, we do have Barbara or Janet. Who wants to talk? Well, this is Barbara. Hi, okay. Barbara. So we're talking daylilies, so, right? Yes, we are. Okay. They didn't bloom this year. They did Why? not bloom. Okay. What do you think, guys? Are, daylilies... are they normally blooming in uh, May, first part of June? They they have always bloomed. Okay. And they just didn't even have a stalk or anything. No no stem, no bloom, nothing. My uh, Asiatic lilies are setting on buds. How long have the day lilies been in the position where they are? Uh, from several years to uh, just last fall. Okay. Because, because like the like the iris, they can kind of crowd themselves. Although they're usually better at 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 least making some flowers around the outside of the clump. Uh, I don't know. I know day lilies, depending on the variety, will bloom all the way from May through the first frost. Uh, so that's why I wanted to make sure that it is a May oh. blooming, end of May, first of June blooming, rather than something that's going to be blooming in July or an August blooming one. Now, if you have something that normally does bloom this early and it doesn't, does that mean it won't bloom just because it didn't it's bloom on its normal be, I schedule? I think it's just, probably just going to be a little bit later. Okay. We did have kind of a wonky winter and yeah, we spring did, and didn't, didn't everything. rack up a lot of uh, degree days in, right. in terms of getting things moving So maybe along. it's yeah. just late. Maybe It not might just be a few, <clears throat> a few weeks late. Yeah. Okay. Maybe not I'd just keep an eye yet. on it, watch it, and see if you start getting some stalks coming up. Okay. I mean, we've got a lot of summer left, so she's got some time. Okay. We're going to go to line three. Janet and Clinton about daffodils. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, I had a 
bunch of daffodils that I could tell it was the foliage, but they didn't bloom. Uh, they didn't bloom for years. And so I divided them up um, in the fall and replanted them and uh, thought maybe they'd bloom in the spring, but they didn't bloom. So I'm wondering, are they ever going to bloom? Well, if, if they were to the point where they weren't blooming and then you dug them up after, after that and then replanted them, they didn't have flowers in them. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they did really well this year, put on a lot of foliage, are still taking up a lot of nourishment from the sunshine. And I would be surprised if they didn't bloom next year. That seems to be a theme this evening. Okay, uh, let's see. Kathy in Pontiac with a question about bittersweet. Kathy, are you there? Yes. Hi. I, hi. I um, have a rain garden, and I guess I planted some bittersweet foolishly. And realized last year that it was totally taking over. So I've been pulling up roots, painting stuff on the roots where I can. And I just wonder any ways I can kill this without having to kill everything else in that rain garden. Because it's, it's untenable. <laughs> How much time do you have? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, you don't want to put a trellis and enjoy it? Or later in the yes. fall? Too massive. Too massive. And it, okay. it never made berries anyway. Well, so you, you, I don't know you, yeah, bittersweet, wrong. you need a male and a female. It takes and if two you to just have one plant <laughs> um, and not knowing the label, how it was marked. Uh, okay. So it, you're probably half one's just going to be putting out foliage. Did it put out flowers this last couple of weeks? Oh, just leaves. Okay. So either get rid of it or get another one and see if. Yeah, you'll probably have, have to if look you, at the flowers to tell which one you need. Oh, right. That's true. That's true. If you, if you don't want it, you'll probably just have to rip it out, physically rip right. it that, out. She sounds like she's on the right track if she right. wants to get rid of it, to cut it back, treat yeah. the stubs, yeah. and, and see how effective that is, and then maybe cut it back again and retreat, keep retreating until mm -hmm. it works. Okay, we're going to line four. Kai Indicator with a question about weeping cherry. Hello, Kai, are you there? Hello. Hi, do you have a question? Uh, yes, I have a weeping cherry that was planted by uh, uh, special people at a nursery, and I did water it in, not a lot of water, but it is, I don't know how to prune it, uh, because it does have a few little hangy down that need to be cut off, That's but amazing. now the leaves are turning yellow. What should I do? Everybody's thinking. Well, like the <clears throat> like the anthracnose, uh, it's been really good weather for leaf spots yeah. on 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 things like cherries and other prunus kinds of things. So, um, hopefully, we're going to get warmer, drier weather pretty soon, and uh, it can come out of it. Um, as far as pruning it, um, you know, the hanging downs are kind of why you have a kind of why you have a, a weeping one, but if, if they're getting out of hand, you can kind of, kind of selectively, selectively yeah. pick, pick a level that you want them to, to weep toward and then cut them off at that level. Okay. Venus, indicator with a question about painted daisies. Venus, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. Um, I planted this painted daisy last year. They did not bloom, but this year it bloomed like crazy. Now, they're kind of, kind of long. If I cut the flowers back, are they going to continue blooming? Not familiar. No? Painted daisy. If it's what I'm thinking it is, I think they might. Okay, they're not familiar with those, so you're going to have to Google it. <laughs> Klaus in Fithian with a question about yellow clover. Go ahead, Klaus. Yeah, hi. I'm, uh, I do vegetable gardening, and... Uh, organic vegetable gardening and uh, this year I see an overabundance of yellow clover. Is there any soil conditioning I can do to avoid that or do they favor um, do they favor conditions where they come out? I, you know you have them every now and then you pick them out but this year is so bad I mean it ground covers like within two three days it just comes up everywhere. 
Yeah, I, don't, I think of sweet clover as, as a soil conditioner, not uh, mm -hmm. something that you would, soil condition would keep, it, keep from happening. Um, I just stay after it and, 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 and try to keep cutting it back and, and, and don't, let, don't let them go to seed because no. the more they go to seed, the more they're going to be next year. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much for your phone calls tonight. We had, that was like a speed round of, of firing questions away. <laughs> How much time do we have? Do we have time for any more questions? No? All right. All right. So I guess we're out of time. They're telling me to wrap it up, but make sure you visit us on all of our socials uh, to keep up on all things MAG. And feel free to email us your questions at yourgarden at gmail.com. And we'll do our absolute best to get them answered. But tonight we didn't get too many calls because we had a lot of phone calls and that's a good problem to have. So thanks so much for joining us and we will see you back here again, same time next week.